From Kern Government Television, welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting, originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 Truxton Avenue, Bakersfield, California. Kern County's vision is to create and maintain a customer-centered county government designed to garner the confidence, support, and trust of the people we serve. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Welcome back. Board to reconvene. Madam Clark, please call the roll. Supervisor Gleason. Here. Supervisor Scrivener. Here. Supervisor Maggard. Here. Supervisor Couch. Here. Supervisor Perez. Here. Thank you. Our flag salute will be led by uh, Ms. Golder, who volunteered to do that. Thank you, Ms. Golder. Please salute the flag, and then we'll remain standing for a moment of prayer, silence, meditation. Good morning. Please stand, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll kick off this morning's meeting with the consent agenda. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff listed in the back, so please pick up a package if you want to follow along with us. Uh, and uh, we'll start off the consent agenda. But before we do that, how about we take a report on actions coming out of closed session, please? Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Gleason and members of the board. The last time your board met on February the 9th, uh, we ran out of time in closed session to address all of the closed session agenda items. At the end of the public session in the afternoon, your board went back into closed session and heard items number 45 and 46 on that agenda. No reportable action was taken, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Golder. Now the consent agenda. All items listed with a CAA or a C above the item number are considered to be routine, non-controversial by county staff. The CAA represents a consent agenda for the Board of Supervisors. Consent items will be considered first and may be appro approved by one motion if no member of the board or the public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anybody, the item will be removed from the consent agenda will be reconsidered in a listed sequence with opportunity for any member of the public to address the board concerning the item before action is taken. So let's go through this and we'll list off all the consent agenda items and we'll ask if people would like to have anything removed. Under resolutions, CA numbers one and two. Appointments, numbers eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Under departmental requests, aging and adult services, 15. Under agriculture and measurement standards, 16, 17. Animal services, 18. Clerk of the board, 19 and 20. County Council 21 through 24, District Attorney 25 through 31, Employers Training Resource 32 through 34, Fire Department numbers 36, 37, 38, Human Services 39, Kern Medical 41 through 43, and then the next page 44 through 48, Mental Health Services 49 through 51, and the next page, 52. Parks and Recreation Department is 53. Probation is 54 and 55. Public Health Services, 56, 57, 59. Sheriff is 61 through 68 on that page. Next page is 69 through 70. And the Treasurer Tax Collector, items 71 and 72. Are any member of the public wish to pull any of those consent items off the agenda? Please come forward and state your name and what would you like to pull? Yes. David Fluhart from Havilah District 1. I would like to pull consent agenda number 8, 16, 17, 24, 30, 49, 53, 62, 64, 68, 71, 73, 74, 75, 79, 80, and 81. Thank you, sir. Uh, could you tell me, please, why, uh, why you want to pull all these things? Is there a common theme in which you're trying to achieve or understand, or what's the uh, issue? On each one of these, um, they, they personally, 
um, pertain to me in many different ways. And I know that it is routine and non-controversial to you and to everybody else. It's routine and non-controversial until it becomes a controversy. Uh, for example, number eight, the, the get board appointee, uh, very important position. And as things get tougher in our society, that bus becomes more important. I, I personally am driving or taking that bus almost every day during the week while I'm in Bakersfield, and, and I appreciate that. And I'm just here to say on just that one point that it's a very tough job, and, and this board and Mr. Nylon trying to get the funding to support this program is very vital. Uh, basically, the deficits are rising, and, and something as simple as bus fare across, the, across town for a job for somebody who's unemployed or or on minimum poverty level of financing can actually do this. And I know personally, I got a pocket full of all day tickets. So, so I wanted to talk about that. Number two. Well, can, I, can I interrupt you just for a quick second? Okay. I appreciate your comments, your thoughts, but the number eight is the appointment of a person, Mr. Bielli, replacing Ms. Henderson right. as an at-large member for the Empire Transit District. What does that have to do with what you just discussed? I don't understand. It has a lot to do because the get bus, just, just six months ago, I think, it was a big issue on, on what was going to be the schedules and what was going to be the routes. And, and you know, I want to make it an issue so that you guys spend time to realize the importance of this issue. Maybe with your cars and your insurance, you can afford all these things, but making a stand for public transportation is very, very very important right and right i don't think anybody in this board would disagree with you at all it is very important and that's why we have appointed mr bielli to represent uh to take place of miss henderson but is there you you pulled off several items maybe two okay. four six how eight, about we just ten, stab 12, number one 14, number 62 16. rotor transmission for the hell for the sheriff's helicopter just 10 days hold, hold on for a second mr flew yes I, i'm in control of this conversation what I'd like to understand is there a theme in what you're trying to see and trying to understand by pulling all these agenda items off? A theme? Um, I guess we go with one theme that the economy and the deficits and, and budgets are getting tighter and tighter. And some of these things, while not objectionable to you and would just fly under the CA, I, I think they're important to discuss. Okay, so uh, you wanted to do number 16? Yes, the seed law. Personally, I'm an agricultural-based uh, person, and the seed law that we're looking at, to me, has a hidden agenda. I mean, I understand that you know the state wants seed seed laws carried out and fulfilled, and they're basically giving you money to carry out that law. But I'm just at a certain point, it's for hundred dollars to start with, and it's retroactive. So basically, I would think at some point the county did not want to follow this 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 program and take the state money for following their laws and now we are taking them and to me personally I'm worried about not being able to get seeds that come from more than three miles away from where I live um, I mean I'm I'm an agricultural industry pretty small but I'm worried about that you know a certain point we can go back to it's just a ploy for Monsanto and GMOs you know I, I you know, it's important to me, the seed law. I'd almost say, let's not take the hundred dollars and let's not take the, the grant money from the state so we can, you know, do it the way we used to. At this point, we're broke, so guess what? We're striving real hard to get those federal dollars and those state dollars, and we're selling our basic principles as county, as a county. Have you, have you Mr. Fluhat, have you, I appreciate your position. Have you taken this up with Mr. Uh, with Rubin? Have you, you talked to him about this? Um, I, I try and contact people. Usually they don't contact me back. Okay. Uh, you had number 17? Yes, that's the glassy wing sharpshooter, basically a bug that attacks mostly the grape industry. And this is, you know, $500,000 of $3.8 million to eradicate this problem. And as an agricultural grower of, of what I do, that's a problem for me too. So to me, I like that. At first, when I first saw it, I thought it was like a federal program to, to 
make a bird sanctuary and take more property, kind of like the Bundy Oregon thing. I don't know, but then when I looked at it, it was about this bug. And, uh, you know, if we don't have protection for our grape crop, our budget's just going to get worse and worse. So. Okay, what I'd like to do in, in this essence of, I appreciate what you're doing, I appreciate your concerns. Uh, what I'd like to do is go through your concerns and list them down and then take them all as a whole and then make a vote and a motion on that. Is that possible? Chairman Gleason, it is, because they are so different from each other, it is better to take them separately. But I'm, I'm interested in the fact that we have people here in this audience, staff members, department heads, that are, are gonna be spending thousands of dollars hearing these things, and I'm okay with giving Mr. Fluhat a, a legitimate response to his concerns, understanding if those concerns are legitimate and he hasn't gone through the appropriate process, I would think, of making contact with department heads to work through these issues so that he doesn't clog our meeting here and force us to spend all morning here on issues that could have been resolved at a, in a different venue, a more effective way of managing these issues for his satisfaction. I understand. So what I'd like to do, Mr. Fluid, is I'd like to go through your issues, go through them, and uh, let's take them on and let's move forward with it. Do we want to do this after the other agenda items? No, I'd rather do it right now. Okay, okay. Um, so the glassy wing sharpshooter is an issue to me that's very important. And I'm happy to see that it's about a bug and grapes and not birds in a wildlife refuge that, that is a federal ploy. Number 24, sheriff records destruction. Um, number 22, 23, and I think 21 is destruction of other records. And to me, this list of records to be destroyed was purely internal affairs issues. And my question is, is destroying these records, are there, is there pertinent evidence that will come up in the future when something else comes up? I, I don't know. Uh, I know there's over 150 of these files that are going to be destroyed. And to me, you know, personally, I've, I've got situations going back years, and if they're destroyed, you know, is the correct answer from the county is, oh, we don't have that information anymore, too bad. So I am concerned about it, and, and I've got no idea what particular instances they're going at and, and what different issues there are, but okay. would it affect future liability from the county in trying to resolve a, a, a future possible situation? Um, so now it would be a direct question to, to I guess... Me. You, the board. <laughs> Next question. Um, number 30, it's a DA recognition. Basically funding for the district attorney to show appreciation towards her staff. And uh, when you look at the previous CAs, she's doing a lot to recoup and um, make, uh, acquire grants to support a lot of, of justice services to, you know, elderly, to crippled, to a lot of different people. I think she's working really hard to, to provide justice and prosecute the wrong. Um, and while we're basically through tough financial times, this money I think is really well spent to support her, her staff in doing the job that she does. Number Did 40, you tell her that? Usually when I see her, she's walking, so usually she probably doesn't want me coming up and talking to her too much. But I will in the future contact all these people. and we'll Just send them an email. Hmm? Send them an email. An email. Okay, I'll do that too. Are we on a timer? Hmm? Have we timed this? We need to put this on a timer because we don't have all morning. I'd like for you to quickly go through your issues as quickly as you can so we can get them registered and then get you answers as quickly as we can. Okay, 5150, number CA49 is a 5150 list, and I'm not quite sure what it takes to get on this list. I understand if you're, you're whacked out and you're not taking care of yourself, there's, there's you know, a need for the, for the county, the state, and the federal government to take care of problems. And in general, I'd be concerned about this issue because what other people think of other people sometimes don't match. And I personally am, am kind of concerned about this issue. Lately, I've been getting thoughts that I look too scraggly. 
uh, my acnes get cleaned up the whole nine yards, and so I'd like to where the borderline of, of this 5150 is. You know, I, I, I don't think I'm a danger to myself or anybody else, but I guess that's not up to me to decide. And I've got some serious concerns over that issue. Number 53, consent agenda number 53 is basically $400 for a barbecue lunch at the uh, Kern County Recreational um, Places, Ming, and I, I, I don't know, Buena Vista. And basically it's, it's for the law enforcement there so that they don't have to leave and, and get lunch or whatever during this busy time. And I want to say I think that's a great idea. The, the more that the sheriff's department feels comfortable and, and safe and don't have problems to worry about, I think the less issues would come out of this weekend. You know, if they're running around trying to get lunch, if something happens, they get a little bit more on edge. Um, in this financial times, I know $400 for a barbecue isn't really a, a, you know, could be questioned, but I think it's a good idea. Uh, morale is very important in these situations. Number 62 is regarding the sheriff's main rotor on one of his helicopters. Just 10 days ago, that helicopter was above my house and we were waving to each other. I was pointing to the flag on my roof, giving him a thumbs up, everything was cool. Nice friendly flyover, obviously it's middle of February, so I'm not doing other things that would be more prominent in spring and summer, so I just think it was a friendly flyover and, and uh, you know, saying hi. Uh, that rotor transmission is really important because if that helicopter crashes on my house, it's going to be a really disappointing day for me. Number 64 is an off-highway vehicle county match to the state government. Uh, I think the match was four to one, and I, I like the aggressiveness on trying to get these grants from the state and other sources. I imagine those vehicles would have been really helpful in the jawbone situation. Um, I, the quicker we can ascertain people that need to be caught, the better. Um, maybe we'd have caught them a couple days earlier, which would have saved us a lot of money, and we wouldn't have found them in the middle of the desert towards Inyo Kern. Number 68. Uh, consent agenda item number 68 is the selling of an off-duty weapon, and I just really want to say I appreciate the sheriff and the support of the Second Amendment right. Uh, you know, if it... it Somehow I just like the idea that, that even he is supporting the Second Amendment right in this Kern County, and I, I, when I see that, I like it. Um, number 71, this is, this is an interesting one, the Deferred Compensation Plan 1 and 2. It's got a bunch of pages, and it's a lot of financial things written in it, and all I want to know is really where do these plans stand? Do we have an unfunded liability towards our employees? Which is a rather large issue because we're currently also going through what CA number 74, which is a, a union agreement with uh, SEIU, and they're looking at cashing out their 2.1% 2, 2 that is supposed to go to, to retirement. I don't know. It's a lot of pages. It's a lot of writing, and, and it'd be really helpful if they just had a conclusion saying, we are this much behind or that we are this much above. I've got no idea and I could research it. I could call, 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 call and just a couple of seconds up here and the guy could just say, it's a mess or we're looking beautiful. I don't know. So that one's a pretty serious one. I know you guys are just waving off everything I'm talking about, but this one here is important. Number 73, the fire chief evaluation. Just two weeks ago, you guys said he had to cut X amount of dollars, and he came back pretty quickly saying, yeah, I can cut that money real quickly. Your fire station, your fire station, your fire station, this, 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 this. And really, it was kind of, I would, if I was up where you are, almost insulting that it takes him no time to say, I'm cutting all these things. And it became a rather important issue. Okay, I don't know. There's multiple ways of making more financing for the county. And uh, when this came up, it was almost funny to me because I imagine by the time he got in the car, he says, oh, I know exactly how to cut, you know, X amount of millions of dollars. It goes straight, straight to, to stations. And, you know, the thought of employing less people per station, it's just a, it's a danger issue. You know, I totally agree with the guy. I have three people, two just might be a mess. 
Yes. We're running out of time here, sir. You want me to cover all these in two minutes? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Um, so anyways, I like the fire chief, SEIU. <laughs> um, going back to number 71, the deferred compensation plan. Um, I, I hope there's some middle ground and hopefully we can figure out where exactly we can support our employees and make it work with the county in their retirement. Number uh, 75 is basically evaluation of John Nylon. I actually have my notes up there. I didn't think I'd be giving them all, but basically uh, four thoughts. One, you don't want to change your CAO in the middle of stream. He's doing a good job on trying to reorganize everything in this county. Okay, I think he's doing a good job in trying to get the grants and re-sign you know, past retroactive agreements. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the board, Mrs. Perez and yourself, had, had thought it would be a good idea to start looking outside the box, and I think he's hopefully doing that, and he's, he's you know, a pretty creative guy. I don't know how many times you guys have thought, hey, can we get this as a financial funding stream? And he says he's already looked at it, you know, and no, they can't do that, you know. Um, I, I could, I don't have my notes on the situation, and I've only got 43 seconds left, so I'll continue on. Number 79 is anticipated litigation. I don't know what they are, but the basic thought is, well, 79 and 80 is, some point you know that the county has harmed somebody. They don't know it. I just kind of, I can understand the position of not saying anything, <laughs> telling them that you have harmed this person for fi financial reasons, but it's just kind of interesting. I could say more. And the number 81 is anticipated litigation regarding ordinance 5.85, and you will find a lot more of these similar things. I have no idea what happened in this case, but 5.85 can be a very, I guess, awkward situation that will lead to a lot of anticipated litigation. Thank you, Mr. Flop. All right. Thank Appreciate you. your time. So what we're going to do here uh, is we're going to uh, take a vote on the, I'm going to ask the public if they have any comments about the items that Mr. Fluhat has pulled off the agenda. Are there any comments that we'd like the public would like to offer? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on those agenda items and bring it back to the board for a vote. I'd like to vote on the consent agenda minus the items that Mr. Fluhat pulled. We'll vote on that, make the vote, and then we'll go quickly down through those items number by number and number, and we'll just have an individual vote on each item that was pulled. Is that factory? That's acceptable. Uh, also, if your board member, if any board member has any questions about any of those items, we could, staff can respond if you would like. Motion okay. to consent. Second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Item, item number eight. Looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Wait, wait, Second. Take your time and hurry up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Item number eight. Motion to approve. Second. Please cast your votes. Motion is approved. All ayes. 16. Motion. Second. Cast your votes. <laughs> Are your fingers getting tired? Mr. Chairman, the problem is the program, I've been trying to add these items into okay. the program. Um, with council's approval, do I, do I need to go back and reflect the number on the screen every time? Either a voice vote or yes, it has to be on the screen. A voice vote? That sounds yes. good. Let's just do a voice vote. A voice okay. vote. Okay, let's, we'll do voice votes. We, do we have a vote on number eight, is that correct? We've achieved yes, that. Yes, we do. That one is approved. So. How about 16? Have we done a voice vote? Have we had a vote on 16? We have not yet. yet. Let's do a vote on 16. Look for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 17. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 24. Motion, motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 30. 
Motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 49. Motion. Second. Favor. I Aye. mean, uh, Aye. 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 53. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 62. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 64. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 68. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 71. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 73. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 74. Wait, 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 wait. Some of these are closed session. We haven't got the closed session. <laughs> closed session will go faster that way. <laughs> Isn't 73 so in there session. after closed session? No. Yeah. Okay, so you want to do 73? I withdraw my motion. Thank you. Good. Okay, we need to figure out a way to do that. If that's going to happen again, uh, that's not going to happen again. Uh, we need to figure out how we're going to manage that, and uh, we'll, get on. we'll get to it. Okay, I'm sorry. Ask for the indulgence of the audience and the public. But that's the public process, and uh, every person deserves the right to be heard, and that's what we just did. So I'm proud of doing that. Okay, moving on, uh, item number three, a proclamation for February 22nd to 26th, 2016 is Nurse Family Partnership Week in Kern County. Supervisor Scrivener. Motion to approve. Second. Cash your votes. Motion is approved, all ayes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and, and members of the board. The Nurse Family Partnership Program helps transform the lives of vul vulnerable first-time mothers and their babies. Through ongoing home visits from registered nurses, low-income, first-time mothers receive the care and support they need to have a healthy pregnancy, provide responsible and competent care for their children, and become more economically self-sufficient. From a healthy babies program to crime prevention, Nurse Family Partnership is validated by research. Some of the positive effects of the NFP program are improved prenatal health, fewer childhood injuries, fewer subsequent pregnancies, increased intervals between births, increased maternal employment, and improved school readiness. Most encouraging is that within the past year, here in Kern County, over 60 mothers and their babies have graduated from this program, with 15 of them graduating this past Friday at a ceremony at the Public Health Department. This is a most worthwhile program, and it is the board's honor today to proclaim February 22nd to the 26th, 2016, as Nurse Family Partnership Week in Kern County. Um, this is a particular pleasure for me because I get to present the certificate to Brian Williams, who is my field rep, and he also serves as the NFP Community Advisory Board Chair. So Brian, come on up here. And uh, I'm going to present this certificate to you. So the Board of Supervisors of the County of Kern, State of California, has officially proclaimed February 22nd to the 26th as Nurse Family Partnership Week in Kern County. Recognition has been entered into their official minutes, signed by our Honorable Chairman, Mick Gleason. Brian, if you'd like to say a few words, and um, I don't know if you want to introduce. We've got a, a big yeah. group behind us here. Um, there's a, I know we have Matt Constantine, our uh, public health department head, and, uh, but there's a lot of other folks. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank, you, Thank you. Thanks for your service. All right. Well, good morning. Thank you, board, for this proclamation. Um, I am the chair of the Community Advisory Board, but I just I do very little. Um, <laughs> all the work is done by these wonderful ladies standing behind me. Um, they are the ones that go into the homes and help our mothers and their babies become productive members of society. And it's just been a pleasure to be a part of this program for several years, but as chairman of the board for the past couple of years. Um, I don't know, Carrie, would you like to introduce some of the nurses here? Okay. All their names, are, would be they're worthy of recognition. So. Okay, um, we have Julie Jones, we have Melissa, I'm, Could I you apologize, please speak this is a little nerve wracking for me, so bear with me. Uh, Julie Jones, Melissa Rowell, Leah Vang, Nellie Escarsaga, hiding behind is Marion and Salva here, Michelle Flom, uh, Kina Ramirez, and Daisy Alvarez, 
our support staff. We have Carmen Flores, Angie Castrejon, we have Dana, Daniela Ugaldi, and I am a supervisor as well as, where's my cohort, Jennifer Herrera. Thank you. Yeah. I'm impressed. Um, actually, would you introduce, go ahead and just introduce, uh, Roland, you just say, Roland's here as well. We also have Roland Meyer from First Five Kern. They're a big supporter of our program. And of course, Mr. Constantine is here, and, and Bryn from in, uh, Public Health. So Thanks. thank you again, board, and uh, thank you. Thanks so much for everything you all do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next up is uh, item number three, excuse me, item number four, proclaim March 2016 as National Nutrition Month in Kern County. And we're also going to do four and five together, which will be March 7th to the 12th, 2016 as National Boys and Girls Club Week in Kern County by Supervisor Perez. Thank you. Motion on items four and five, please. Second. Cast your votes. Motion is approved, all eyes. Elizabeth? Yes. Hello, Elizabeth. Nice to see you. Welcome. Who do we have here with you? Hey, all right, guys. Good team. Well, good morning, Chairman and members of the board. It is truly a delight to be able to present to you today and proclaim March 2016 as National Nutrition Month in Kern County. This month serves as a reminder and an opportunity to get back to the basics of good, healthy eating. Savor the flavor of eating right. That's cool. That is this year's theme chosen by the Academy of Nutrition and Diet Dietetics. How, when, why, and where you eat are all just as important as what you eat. We are all encouraged to develop mindful eating pattern that includes nutritious and flavorful foods, including vegetables, fruits, whole grains, fat-free or low-fat dairy, and lean proteins. In addition, we all know that physical activity plays a role in overall health and well-being. Access to healthy fruits and vegetables in addition to nutrition education is key to fighting childhood obesity. I want to acknowledge and thank the many nutritionists and healthy eating advocates who are helping children and families live longer and healthier lives by making better daily choices. Thank you so much for all that you do to educate, inspire, and encourage. Uh, it is a delight to proclaim March 2016 on behalf of the Board of Supervisors in the County of Kern, State of California and officially proclaim March 2016 as National Nutrition Month in Kern County. Savor the flavor of eating right. This has been recognized by the board, has been entered into the official board minutes, and signed by the one and only Honorable Mick Gleason. For you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the Board of Supervisors for acknowledging the um, National Nutrition Month of and on in as a representative from Community Action Partnership Kern uh, WIC program, uh, we are proud to support the uh, initiative of the National Nutrition Month and encouraging those of us to and all of us to have good nutrition. Uh, as we know, it is very important for the young to learn early that uh, food in savoring the flavor of the actual foods, not the processed and all that sometimes uh, add extra calories that we don't really need, but the wholesome foods that we produce here in Kern County, the fruits and vegetables and all is a very important part of our diet. So I thank you for this proclamation. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Do you want to introduce who's here okay. with you? We have Ruth Bliss. Who right is, here. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I forget this. We have Ruth Bliss who's our day on Nutrition Education Coordinator. She uh, develops classes for all of our clients uh, so that they learn how to savor the flavor. Uh, Lauren Spate is Administrative uh, Coordinator. She is assistant in running the program. And then uh, Mitchell Patel, who is our outreach person. Excellent. So. Very good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Good work. 
Okay, very good. Number five this morning, chairman and members of the board, of course, is a proclamation for March 7 through the 12, 2016 as National Boys and Girls Club Week in Kern County. Quite a team here. I love you guys. We love you too. Good. I like that. Oh, our very own Alan Crowder in the house. Very good, good to see you all, good morning. Love you guys. We have with us, of course, Vanessa Emo, am I saying that right? Vanessa, if you wanna come forward, and of course, a remarkable team of fabulous human beings who care so much about our children. Uh, did you know, Chairman Gleason, uh, that we, there are currently an estimated 16 million, 16 million Boys and Girls Club alumni? 15 million, excuse me, 16 million lives that were changed because of the Boys and Girls Club experience. I did, and I'm one of them. Oh, fantastic, excellent, fantastic, excellent. <clears throat> excellent, as am I, Chairman. Here locally, every March, we come together and celebrate the empowerment of young people. We acknowledge tomorrow's leaders, business owners, and perhaps even our future elected officials. We also commend the thousands of mentors that provide our youngest population with the best professional development and state-of-the-art youth services. The Boys and Girls Clubs of Kern County provide sanctuaries, literal sanctuaries, where our children can learn, grow, and reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. Boys and Girls Clubs in our county help ensure that our young people keep off the streets, offering them a safe and supportive place to go, and providing them with vital services. A nationwide study back in June of 2015 revealed that among the nation's 98 largest metropolitan areas, Bakersfield has the second highest rate of youth disconnection. In partnership with PG&E, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Kern County provide youth age 15 to 18 with career education, job readiness training during their summer jobs program. Since 2013, PG&E and the Boys and Girls Club of Kern County have provided training and nearly 2,000 youth and have helped 484 youth secure summer jobs. Last year, my office provided jobs to two of these young people, and this year we plan to provide jobs to three. I wanna thank the Boys and Girls Club of Kern County for their dedication and hard work. There are over 50 Boys and Girls Clubs here in Kern County providing services to more than 8,000 young people. I am proud to have two of the three site locations, EL Jack and Monica Armstrong Youth Center on Niles and Lamont Club in Lamont. Excellent work. Uh, I am thrilled and delighted to see that our very own uh, Alan Crowder has joined the board and is a invaluable asset to an incredible team of growing, uh, aspiring individuals who put their money where their mouths are and their time, uh, most importantly. So thank you for all that you do is a proclamation for you and we'd love to hear from you now. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Supervisor Perez. On behalf of the Board of Directors for the Kern County Boys and Girls Clubs, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you so much for recognizing all the hard work that all of our team does at every single one of their locations. The week for Boys and Girls Club Week is a tremendous opportunity for us to be able to do and highlight specific programs at each one of our sites that we offer to all of the children that we serve. We plan on opening the doors to academic success on that Monday. We plan on opening the doors to teens on that Tuesday opening the door to the good character and citizenship that we promote on Wednesday. On Thursday, we'll be opening the doors to healthy lifestyles. And on that last Friday for that week, it's opening the door and inviting the public to please come, take a tour of our sites, see all the good that we are doing on behalf of the children here in the County of Kern. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. You're a natural. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Let's get a good, uh, let's get a picture oh, here. Over there too. Oh, we've got a photo. Okay, come that on in, way. everyone. Okay. Come on in. Nice to see you guys. Good to see you all. Mr. Chairman, when they're done, I have a, a question for Mr. Smith, if I could. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Oh, here we go, right here. Oh. Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to see you. Thank you. Uh 
Oh, we're in trouble. trouble now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not in trouble. Supervisor Couch, <laughs> I did want to wear a tie. My neck was too fat. <laughs> Couldn't get it on. Did I know how you. I know how you feel. Did that answer? Me. Did that answer your question? No, that was not my question. No. Sorry. Okay. Um, we know this, and you all know this, but I want to give you a chance to uh, just explain the size of the club, the number of kids that you reach on a daily basis, because I think you are a well-kept well secret here in Bakersfield and Kern County of what you're actually doing. There are 62 clubs, 63 in the works. Um, there are, on a, on a daily basis, 7,200 children walking through our doors every single day, and that's our core group. That isn't outside activities or our collaborative partnerships. That's, that's walking through Boys and Girls Club doors. Um, all the way to Fraser Park, from, from Oildale to Fraser, right there on the, on the border. So, um, and uh, we are proud to acknowledge that we are the largest in the nation as far as the number of club sites. We also are number one in the number of average daily attendance on a nation, and there's 4,000 clubs nationwide. So. You do good work, thank you very much. Thank you very much, we're honored. Thank you. So great to see you, so great to see you. Let's see you Good job. Next up um, is Proclaim March 2016 as March for Meals Month in Kern County, Mr. Maggart. Motion to approve. Sir. Please cast your votes. Motion is approved, all ayes. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, I'm happy to be before us this morning to uh, help us proclaim March 2016 as March for Meals Month in Kern County. We have a long and very appropriate history of honoring and caring for the elderly in our community, or in our country, rather. And as far back as March of 1972, President Richard Nixon signed into law <clears throat> a measure that amended the Old Americans Act. Boy, don't we say those things differently now. The Old American Act of 1965, and it established a, a nutrition program for seniors 60 years and older. Meals on Wheels America established the National March for Meals campaign in March of 2002. This, is, this uh, um, affects me as I watch my mother and uh, some of my older family members move into their senior years. An estimated 9.3 million Americans over the age of 60, that's one in six, face the threat of hunger, and more than 15 million seniors are isolated and live alone. No one comes to their door except to sell them something. <laughs> no one comes to their door to see how they are in the course of a day or a week or a month. Last year, Kern County Aging and Adult Services Department, uh, through their senior nutrition program, served more than 375,000 meals to Kern County seniors. The observance of March uh, for Meals Month, that, that's hard to say fluently, isn't it, Mr. Chairman? You did that very well a moment ago. The observance of our March for Meals uh, Month provides an opportunity to recognize older Americans, the Older Americans Act and Nutrition Program and the contributions it's made over 40 years. So on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, this is Lito Murillo, our Director uh, of Aging and Adult Services. I'd like to give you this proclamation that says that the Board of Supervisors, on behalf of the County of Kern and the State of California, has officially proclaimed March of 2016 as Me March for Meals Month in Kern County. It's been entered into our board minutes. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your leadership. I'd love to hear from who else you'd like to have speak here this morning and to hear a little bit more about March for Meals Month. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Maggard. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you so much for this proclamation and your continued support for the Senior Nutrition Program. As Supervisor Maggard alluded to, March for Meals is a nation nationwide campaign that's really designed to create awareness of not only the Meals on Wheels program, but the Senior Nutrition Program as a whole. Whether you're talking about delivering meals to seniors in, at their home, that are homebound, they can't leave their home, or the 18 senior centers that we operate and provide meals at, the Senior Nutrition Program is an essential part of their, their daily lives. Uh, for many, it's the only meal they receive for that day. For others, it's a way to socialize and not be so isolated, which many of them are so. 
Uh, one important benefit that Supervisor Maggard touched on the Meals on Wheels program brings is the rapport and relationship that happens between our drivers and our clients. It is such an essential thing to see. It's, it's, it's crucial. Uh, for a lot of them, it's a daily check for that senior's well-being. And for others, it's a way for them to interact and share their daily lives and what's going on. It's really neat to see that rapport build throughout the years. Last year, as Supervisor Mayor uh, mentioned, we, did, uh, we served over 375,000 meals. Not quite McDonald's, but uh, we're getting there. <laughs> um, we couldn't do this uh, without our partners, and we have our partners here today. From North Third River, we have Michelle Ulrich, Michelle, Diane Hooper, and Lisa Plank. And from Bakersfield Senior Center, we have Lily Parker. And then I'd also like to acknowledge the, the countless volunteers that we have working at our senior center, either delivering meals, preparing meals. It's a, definitely a, an effort that's a team effort altogether. As far as activities, we have dignitaries throughout the month that will be delivering meals or serving meals at various senior centers. Uh, we also have fundraising events happening at Bakersfield Senior Center. Uh, NOR, as well as Aging and Adult Services Commission on Aging, they'll be doing a fundraiser at Pizza Rev. Uh, now, uh, I'd like, with KGov's assistance, to show a short video on the March for Meals campaign. Join Meals on Wheels in the 14th annual March for Meals to celebrate the seniors in our communities and the ways we can all support them. For the month of March, all across the country, communities will join together to take a stand for the millions of seniors struggling with hunger and isolation. Meals on Wheels is a proven collaboration of local community organizations, businesses, all levels of government, and more than two million dedicated volunteers. Together, we deliver the nutritious meals, friendly visits, and safety checks that are often all it takes for our seniors to remain in their own homes where they want to be. And by doing so, we save billions of dollars in nursing facilities, hospitals, and health care costs. The 2016 March for Meals promises to be our greatest campaign ever with more participating communities, more national attention, and a greater focus on the issue and what each of us can do to keep our senior neighbors more nourished and healthy. So join the march. Celebrate March for Meals in your own way. Donate what you can. Hold a fundraising event so others can give. Speak out to elected officials. Or join the dedicated army of volunteers who are committed to making sure that our senior neighbors are not forgotten. March with us. Now if I could have Lisa Plank from North of the River make a few comments. Good morning, Chairman Gleason and Supervisors. Uh, my name is Lisa Plank. I'm the Marketing Director for North of the River Recreation and Park District, which is home to our Meals on Wheels program. We are honored to be here today to represent the North of the River Meals on Wheels program and uh, be here with our partner, the Office on Aging and Adult Services, to celebrate the proclamation of March for Meals Month. March for Meals is an important awareness and education campaign designed to put the spotlight on what is being done in the community to deal with senior hunger and how much more needs to be done. We are grateful to the Board of Supervisors for all of your help in helping us achieve this goal. North of the River Meals on Wheels delivers 237 hot and nutritious meals to homebound seniors each weekday. Just over three years ago, that number was only 144. There is always a waiting list. Ours currently sits at right around 60. As our senior population continues to grow, senior hunger and isolation will be an ever-increasing issue. The more we can educate the community and get them involved, the more seniors we can serve, thereby closing the gap. We ask that all of you take a moment during this month to learn about senior hunger and isolation in our community and what you can do to help alleviate that. Consider becoming a Meals on Wheels volunteer, or at the very least, come out during the month of March. We have a lot of fun things planned at the Rasmussen Senior Center on East Roberts Lane uh, from a health fair to some fundraising events that you can find on the NOR website, and also Community Champions Week. If you haven't signed up to be a community champion during the week of March, uh, the week of March 21st through the 25th, we'd love to have you come out, spend as little or as much time as you can, prep some meals, deliver some meals, come meet some of our fabulous seniors 
For them, it is truly more than a meal, and it will change your life as much as it changes theirs. Thank you. That concludes our presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is proclaim March 2016 the 16th as Social Work Appreciation Month in Kern County. Mr. Couch. Motion on the proclamation. Second. Please Second. cast your votes. Motion is approved, all eyes. Morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, last but not least, we talk a little bit about uh, Social Worker Aware Appreciation Month in Kern County. Social workers play an extremely vital role in our community, and sometimes it's work that you don't see, but you see the fruit of that work. They help people solve and cope with problems in their everyday lives. It occurs to me that we could probably use one here <laughs> almost every, every time we meet. Um, <laughs> And they help with uh, people with a, such a wide range of situations. They have to be extremely versatile. They assist with adoption services that link children to uh, loving forever homes. They help provide referrals that provide food, childcare, healthcare, and housing. They respond to crisis situations involving child abuse and other mental health emergencies. And they consistently follow up with their clients to ensure that all of their basic needs are met. Ultimately, they strive and they do make a difference in people's lives, especially the most vulnerable. They help build support and empower positive family and community relationships. The clients are grateful for their work and we are grateful to, for the work that they do as well. And um, so we'd like to honor them with this proclamation that reads, the Board of Supervisors, uh, County of Kern, State of California has officially proclaimed March 2016 as Social Worker Awareness Month in Kern County, excuse me, Social Worker Appreciation Month in Kern County, and this recognition has entered, been entered into the official board minutes assigned by our Honorable Chairman, Mick Gleason, dated today, March 1st, 2016. I'd like to present this to our Director of uh, Human Services, Dina Murphy. Dina? Thank you. Put her there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Supervisor Couch. Chairman. Gleason and members of the board, thank you for this proclamation. I'm Dina Murphy, your Director of Human Services, and I'm joined today um, by, uh, with Bill Walker, who is our Director of Kern County Mental Health, Lito Morello, our Director of Office on Aging, who you, you just heard from, Tom Corson, who is our Executive Director of the Kern County Network for Children, and social workers Sarah Warner, Kim Ryan, and Jeremy Gray. We're here to recognize more than 600 social work professionals in our uh, county family, but hundreds more in our community who work tirelessly every day to help the needs of individuals and families. Social workers are in the schools working on educational outcomes and potential for children. They're in the hospitals uh, working tirelessly to get individuals home safely after they've uh, suffered an illness. They're working with the mentally ill and depression and anxiety issues and trying to make them as productive individuals as possible. They also work with them on substance abuse issues. Um, as you just heard from Lito, we have a, a group of precious angels working with our elderly and they are so often the one person that that elderly individual sees on an ongoing basis to ask just how are you and to be their friend. And then, of course, um, our valiant social workers who work with our, our vulnerable children. It's very hard to put into words um, the impact that a social worker has, but if you've ever been in the court system and, and been there through the process and then at the point that a child is either reunified with a family successfully for all that family has gone through to be put back together or the joy a new family feels when they're solidifying an adoption for that child and they've got a uh, forever family is just a, a small glimpse of, of the success of um, the work that the social workers do every single day. One of our supervisors recently received a letter from a constituent who wanted to be 
uh, sure that the social worker was recognized, and I'm just going to read you the couple sentences. If I could have Jeremy step up here so everybody could see his face and be just as proud of him as I am. Um, Mr. Gray was our calm in the storm, and even when things looked the darkest, he maintained his composure, which on countless occasions provided the strength and courage for us to keep moving forward. The client went on to say he believed in me when nobody else did, and I didn't even believe in myself. He lit a path that when it was black, he let me run when it was appropriate and gently guided and corrected my course when he saw I was running in the wrong direction. I think the words um, very beautifully stated speak reams for Mr. Gray and the rest of our social workers, and I would like to recognize those social workers now that are in the audience representing many different fields in Kern County. If you'd please stand, we will just give you a round of applause for I personally thank you, and I know that uh, our leadership standing behind me who represent all areas of social workers in the county um, also thank you, and we appreciate so very much the proclamation, and I'll hand this to Jeremy to take back to uh, the group of social workers at Department of Human Services. Thank you. Good job. Nice to see you, Tom. That takes us to, we'll get these, it'll give us a second for this place to clear out. Okay, that takes us to public presentations. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the board on any matter not on the agenda but under the jurisdiction of the board. Board members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the board at a later meeting. Also, the board may take action to direct the staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. Speakers are allotted two minutes. Is there anybody in the public who would like to take advantage of public presentations this morning? Please come forward, state your name, you have two minutes. Good morning, Chairman Gleason, Supervisor, Staff, Ray Scott, Keep Bakersfield Beautiful and the Greater Bakersfield Green Expo. Um, I believe staff has given you a, a, a flyer for this event which comes up Saturday, April 23rd. Um, this event is rather special this year for being the 15th annual Bakersfield Great American Cleanup and the Greater Bakersfield Green Expo is in its seventh year. Um, this is special for the fact also that the CEO and president of Keep America Beautiful has 1,600 places that she could be on this date. Instead, she's going to be here recognizing Bakersfield, Kern County for the efforts that go on this day. And actually, the Great American Cleanup for Bakersfield and Kern County is actually a year-long event. What this event is, is the celebration of all the efforts that go on through Kern, Bakersfield and Kern County, where um, everybody comes together at Yokins Park. A lot of people do, do cleanup events, beautification events, anti-graffiti events the morning of. Come to Yokins Park for a barbecue. Celebration actually starts at 11 o'clock, the ceremony. But the Greater Bakersfield Green Expo, which is the only uh, recycled material art competition, which is open up to every high school student in Kern County, the awards will be given out 10 o'clock that morning because they're judged on Friday evening by six professional artists and six recyclers, including Jennifer Jen, the president of Keep America Beautiful this year. This is an invitation, and I appreciate everything that the county does to support our efforts. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public? Moving on to 14, board member announcements or reports? Mr. Couch. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Fluid. I'm sorry, I didn't see you come down. 
Um, David Fluhart, 1st District Tableau. Uh, thank you for your time, effort, and patience earlier today. I know I might seem like a nuisance and everything. Um, at some point, hearing isn't listening. Uh, I feel a few things were whitewashed. All right, fine. Um, you know, I, I guess at a point I'm treated differently because I'm considered a nuisance. Um, but I look forward to the future timely responses when I send out an email. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate that from you, Mr. Cleason. And um, other than that, I guess uh, I should just trust in the board that you guys are going to make all the right decisions and just save everything going to happen. You know, um, you know I, there it is. And God, we trust. Forget that. And the board of supervisors, we trust. I, not even going to worry about it. You guys can figure out what's going to happen with the deputies. And when this happens, and I, I shouldn't even worry about it. Um, I guess it's all good. At a certain point, I would like to, to just throw out a, a quote there. Psalms 11, 18, verse 9. Uh, I have trust in God, not in politicians. Um, sometimes I'm not, you know, I can be a nuisance, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of things out there, and I, I, I don't know, I'm worried, I'm scared. I can quote each one of you and thoughts that you guys have, and, and uh, you know, I consider what you think, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I'll get out of here. I spent too much time taking up your valuable time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Blewett. Any other members of the public? Okay, now it's closed and I go to board member announcements. Mr. Couch. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nylon, this is um, for you, uh, I believe. A couple weeks back when we um, did our 1% mid-year budget cut and gave our 2.5% guidance for the upcoming fiscal year, there were some, I'll call them operational changes. I don't know if that's the, the right term or not, but changes within the Sheriff's Department um, in response to the 1% budget cut. And so, and I get asked a lot um, because I know what was proposed to happen and I think that's a little different than what occurred, which is fine, but I, I don't have a good answer on what actually happened. So could I ask you to get with the Sheriff's Department and just bring us back a report at your earliest convenience on what the changes actually were? Thank you. Do you need a motion to that, to that effect or? You didn't? Thank you. Any other takers for board member announcements? I've got, I've got two. Uh, first one I'd like to have, a, uh, as you know, the Kern County is um, opening a conversation with high-speed rail as to uh, competing for the heavy maintenance facility. And our focus is on and only on the heavy maintenance facility, uh, not on the high-speed rail issue itself. There are two sites, possible sites, in Kern County that uh, can compete for this heavy maintenance facility. One's in Wasco, one's in Shafter. I'd like a resolution from this board uh, that states that uh, we are not uh, preferential to either site. Our focus is on Kern County winning the heavy maintenance facility and not whether Shaft or, or Wasco wins it. And that whatever site, if we're so blessed to win that, then um, we'll support either site. And I'd like the resolution in the next couple of weeks coming back so the board can consider it and uh, comment on it. The second thing is um, next week there is a the high speed rail is meeting in Sacramento on Tuesday March eighth. Uh, I'm going to go up there on Tuesday to compete to advocate for Kern County uh, winning that heavy maintenance facility. I think it's absolutely critical that uh, we win that. Uh, those jobs are are many, and the economic benefit from winning or playing a role in that heavy maintenance faci facility is critical to this county. So I'll be missing next week's uh, board meeting and uh, asking Supervisor Couch if he'd take the role as uh, to, to haunt you the deal and get it moving. So uh, thank you very much. Any other board members? Thank you very much. That moves us down to number 35, Fire Department's proposed agreement with Bell Helicopter Training Academy containing non-standard terms and conditions for fire pilot training from April 18, 2016 through April 21 in the amount of $5,365. Chief. Chairman Gleason, members of the board, the item before you is for fire helicopter pilot training. For the last 15 years, uh, the Kern County Fire Department has participated in this training 
It gives our fire helicopter pilots uh, the ability to fly in very difficult conditions, uh, trains them how to handle water dropping operations in mountainous terrain and the hoist rescue activities that we perform. This year we will be doing the training in Tehachapi and included uh, with the Kern County Fire Department, the Kern County Sheriff's Department, Orange County Fire Authority, and the Santa Barbara County Fire Department. This is valuable training for all the pilots that participate in this. While well, reviewing the proposed agreement, County Council found some non-standard terms and conditions, and at this time, I would like County Council to explain uh, the ramifications of these non-standard terms and conditions. Thank you, Chief. Ho hold on. Uh, we will do so if the chairman so yes. directs us. Yes, Madam Council. All right. Thank you, uh, Chairman Gleason and members of the board. There are really four issues that were the reasons why we weren't able to approve this as to form and content. And I'm going to turn it over to Chief Deputy County Counsel Guru Jota Khalsa, and he'll explain those to you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Gleason, members of the board. Uh, this is a... Uh, Helicopter pilot training agreement. The vendor is Bell Helicopter. The services are helicopter pilot training. Uh, there is an inherent danger in the operation of aircraft, uh, which focused our attention on the limitation of liability terms in the agreement, in which Bell uh, is liable only for gross negligence or willful misconduct, or for injuries or damage occurring while the helicopter is operated by the instructor. Any other uh, injuries or damage that occurs will all fall to uh, county uh, liability. It is the county requirement to indemnify and hold harmless bail for those liabilities and losses. Uh, the choice of law uh, for dispute resolution is Texas. Therefore, if there are difficulties, we would be forced to go to Texas to litigate uh, these issues uh, with bail and hold them responsible and accountable. And there's an absence of liability insurance. For these reasons, and given the nature of what it is uh, uh, the vendor and our county will be participating in, uh, we felt that these were non-standard terms that need to be called to your attention uh, and removed from the consent agenda. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any follow-up, Chief? Chairman Gleason, members of the board. Chairman Gleason, members of the board. Uh, like I said, this uh, helicopter training we've been doing uh, for several years. Uh, it's been in Kern County the last several, uh, few years. It's valuable training for our fire helicopter pilots. Therefore, it's recommended that your board approve the proposed non-standard agreement with Bill Helicopter Training Academy for the fire pilot fi flight training and authorize the fire chief to sign. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. I'll open the public for comment. Anyone in the public would like to comment on this item number 35? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for comment consideration. I'll move approval. Second. Please cast your votes. Motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. That brings us to item number 40, Kern Medical. Proposed initial appointment of the Kern County Hospital Authority Board of Governors. Russell, up to you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, Chairman Gleason, members of the board, uh, this is an exciting day. I don't know if I can wipe the smile off my face. Uh, we have been working very diligently for, <laughs> for over two years uh, to, to bring us to this point. Um, last October, uh, your board enacted the ordinance uh, that formed uh, the Kern County Hospital Authority. Uh, this followed on the heels of some state law that we work very closely with Assemblyman Salas and Senator Gene Fuller on uh, to create um, the formation of the Kern County Hospital Authority. That brings us to today to the uh, initial selection and placement of the Board of Governors uh, for the Kern County Hospital Authority. Uh, we are working for and anticipate uh, on a July 1st transfer date of transferring the, the hospital uh, to the Kern County Hospital Authority. And of course, prior to that, we do need to have a governing board uh, in place. The ordinance uh, outlines the responsibilities, uh, the, compos the composition, um, and rights and responsibilities of the Board of Governors, as well as its relationship to the County of Kern and the uh, rights and responsibilities that the, your board uh, will retain. 
the ordinance outlines that the Board of Governors will be composed of seven individuals. Uh, one will be the County Administrative Officer. Uh, this position is appointed uh, by the individual who holds the office uh, by that nature. Um, it is not um, voted on, it's an automatic placement. Uh, that individual will be an active member of the board and will have a vote and be on equal status with all other board members. Uh, there is one member of the medical staff of Kern Medical uh, that uh, will be uh, selected um, by your board and there will be five community members appointed to that board as selected uh, by the board. The ordinance has outlined uh, the process whereby applications were received. Uh, a quality review committee reviewed those applications, made a recommendation in regards to the medical staff appointment, and also uh, vetted all applications to make sure that they were appropriate members of the board, that there was no conflict of interest, and they met the minimum requirements. Uh, your board then, out of the uh, everyone who submitted an application, um, made a nomination to the slate. Um, we have six uh, community members and four members of the medical staff that are on the slate that your board uh, will be selecting today. Uh, the appointment process, the vote process, is clearly outlined in the uh, county ordinance, um, and we will be following that process uh, today as we make that selection. Uh, after the medical staff member is selected and the five community members are selected, uh, we will uh, have a random draw to stagger the initial terms of uh, each of these members. Uh, with the start fresh of these six members, we can't have all of their terms expiring at the same time. Uh, and so we will, uh, the clerk um, will do a random draw to select a year of one, a two-year term, or a three-year term uh, with two assigned to each of those. Uh, we will first vote uh, for the medical staff member. Uh, there is a ballot that will be passed uh, to each uh, of you. You will uh, select one of those candidates out of the four. Uh, we will take a brief, quick recess and the clerk will tally those. Uh, we will then make that announcement. We will then uh, have a ballot that has all six of the community members that have been nominated. Each member of the board will vote for five uh, of those six. Um, there is a potential, of course, as you look, that for a tie, uh, we have a very, the, uh, the ordinance outlines a very clear process of how we will handle that, that vote. If there's a tie, anybody who receives a majority vote is appointed, and then we will re-vote uh, for the tie. Uh, if we get to that point, we will walk through that process and handle it uh, appropriately. Um, it should be uh, noted that there had been an immense amount of people working on this process. Um, I'd be amiss to start naming them. I'd probably forget somebody. And so I, I just want those, those people to know who they are and we want to thank them. They've been down here practicing. We've worked through um, appropriate ballots and, and measures and what happens if we vote this way or that way. We are, I think we're prepared. We have a team backstage. I don't know if that's the right word, but. Uh, behind the scenes uh, that are anxious and ready uh, to walk us through this vote process. So that is the end of my um, introductory comments. I can answer any questions, uh, whether it be from members of the board or from the public, if there be any. Thanks, Judd. Uh, what I'd like to do now is open it up to the public and ask if the public has any comments as to uh, what Mr. Judd just articulated, as to the process that we're going through. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing, pass it back to Mr. Judd, if you would please distribute or have the ballots distributed and explain further the process for our initial st steps here. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Christina is now uh, passing out uh, the ballot for the medical staff uh, appointee. Uh, you will see that there are four names that are listed. Uh, you have each received uh, their demo their um, information, their resume, their curriculum VT, um, all the background information on them prior, and we would ask that you vote for a single uh, candidate cast uh, one vote. Thank you. Cast your votes right by writing them on this piece of paper, and then I'd ask for these ballots to now be collected. The 
ballots have been collected, and now I'd like to call for a short recess, uh, two to three minutes, and we'll get back after recess to after with the tabulation of the votes. Thank you. Before we reconvene, I'll note that all members are present. Uh, would, Madam Clark, would you please announce the results of the medical staff appointment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make sure we also display on the big screen the results of the voting. And the ballot tabulations shown on the screen uh -huh. reflects that Dr. Burgess received four votes. Dr. Mola received one vote. Since Dr. Burgess has received a majority of the votes cast, Dr. Burgess is appointed as the medical staff member to the Kern County Hospital Authority Board of Governors. Outstanding. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Russell, would you please explain the voting process for the community members at large appointments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Tracy, I identified her as Christina Early, I apologize uh, for that, uh, will now be uh, distributing a ballot, uh, very similar to the one you had that has six names on that ballot. Um, each board member uh, is to vote for one, uh, excuse me, five of the six uh, on that uh, the ballot. I should point out that there is no cumulative valley. While you have five votes, you can only vote uh, for individuals. You can't put all your votes behind a, a single individual. So please make uh, five check marks uh, of, on that of the six tallies. We'll again um, tally them. Um, we think we figured out the technical difficulty, so we'll go a little quicker and um, uh, be able to tally those votes. Thank you, Mr. Judd. I'd ask the board to please cast your ballots by writing in ink on the block adjacent to the name of the five candidates you'd like to have as community at large, and then have, uh, please come on in and collect all the ballots. Thank you. We'll once again uh, call for a short recess, two to three minutes, while we uh, tabulate the, the vote. Board to reconvene, and I'll note that all members are present. And ask for the clerk to announce the results of the ballot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, the results are shown on the big screen. The ballot tabulation results show that Russell Bigler, Gregory Bynum, Colleen McGauley, Philip McLaughlin, and Christina Sistrunk all received a majority of the votes cast. Therefore, those five members appointee or those five uh, candidates have been appointed to the Kern County Hospital Authority Board of Governors as the community at large members. Outstanding. I have a round of applause for the winners. And thank everybody for participating. I'll pass this off now to the next stage for Mr. Judd is going to explain to us how we're going to do vote for the terms. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the clerk has now all six names, uh, the one medical staff member, Dr. Burgess, and the five uh, recently appointed community members at large. Uh, she, w the initial terms of the board of supervisors, uh, two will serve for one year, 
two will serve for two years and two will serve for three years. Uh, she will now draw um, randomly uh, out of the bowl um, as outlined uh, in the ordinance. Um, the individuals, two who will serve the first year, uh, she'll make that announcement. She'll draw two more names uh, that will serve for two years. We'll make that an announcement and the final two candidates will serve for three years. Um, at the end of term, the ordinance has outlined the process as well as the bylaws of the uh, Kern County Hospital Authority of how people are reappointed and uh, a year from now, uh, for two of those individuals, we will be going through that uh, reappointment process uh, so that we have board members staggered. Thank you, Mr. Judd. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The six names have been placed into the tra transparent container. The first two names drawn will serve initial terms of one year, and those appointees are Dr. Amir Burgess and Gregory Bynum. And per the ordinance, their initial one-year term will expire June 30, 2017. The next two names that I will draw will serve initial terms for two years. Oops. And those two appointees are Christina Sistrunk and Colleen Magali. Per the ordinance, their initial two-year term will expire June 30, 2018. The last two names drawn will serve for three-year terms. That would be Russell Bigler and Philip McLaughlin. And they both will serve a three-year initial term, which will expire June 30, 2019. All initial terms have been assigned. Outstanding, high tech, way to go. <laughs> hey, Kathy. Uh, Mr. Judd, I'd like to ask you for some closing comments, please. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, the list of people to thank that has put forth the effort uh, to get us to this day uh, is very long, uh, an immense amount of effort. Um, as I mentioned, we started this process uh, two years ago. Why we're not across the finish line. Um, we're moving very slowly, we're moving very methodically. Uh, we've done a lot of work. We still have a lot of work to do uh, to uh, allow Kern Medical to um, continue to fulfill its very important mission uh, here in the community uh, to serve the safety net and to be the tertiary uh, and trauma center uh, for our community. So I appreciate the board's um, ongoing support, uh, their direction, uh, the leadership that has been exhibited by uh, each of you in providing guidance to uh, all the members of the teams uh, that have been working on this. So thank you, uh, Supervisor Gleason and members of the board for your direction and leadership uh, through this process. Outstanding, thank you, Mr. Judd. I'd like to offer the board a chance for uh, comments. I know this has been a very rigorous process and a lot of our community has engaged fully. Uh, not everybody has been was selected, but uh, we, we managed to select the very best of the very best. And so I'd offer my an opportunity for my colleagues to make comment. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, who's first? Uh, Mr. Perez is first. Thank you sorry, very much. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Judd, once again, uh, you make this process look very easy and clean and and not as though it has taken hours and hours and hours of work and uh, contemplation and all of the um, conversations that have occurred, uh, not in the public, uh, to vet candidates and to uh, really ensure that we have the absolute best and the brightest. Uh, you know, you come before us for a few minutes and uh, we really don't get a sense of really how much has gone into uh, this actual process, how many sleepless nights you have had. And, how much is really resting upon the successful process of us moving forward. So uh, I wanna say thank you for all of the hours and uh, sleepless nights that we do not see here and they're not represented in this short presentation, uh, but thank you for making it so concise and fair and a process of integrity. And I'm excited about the next step. So congratulations to you, your team. I look forward to many, many more successes together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Perez, Supervisor Maggart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I think, it, out of the frustration and struggle that we've borne at uh, Kern Medical over the years, uh, sometimes the very best efforts of good people has been tended to be disregarded or sometimes even vilified. And I just want to say that in spite of those best efforts of all those people who gave us everything they had to fix this, what is apparent now is in the last two, two and a half years that we have made a monumental effort to turn that ship and, and save Kern Medical. What has become obvious to me is how broad 
and um, uh, the spectrum is of, of things that we had to do in order to make it change. And we have done those, and it's still not done. We are still in the process of fixing that place, to use the word we've used so many times. So I just want to thank all those that are involved. And now I want to thank uh, those that are about to, to carry the load for us. These people we've just appointed have a very, very significant responsibility to all of us who live in Kern County, those who visit Kern County on our highways uh, as they come through our communities. Uh, they have a very, very big responsibility, and I want to thank them, first of all, for doing that. And uh, lastly, once again, to our staff uh, at all levels that have helped make this possible. Thank you very much for this. The taxpayers of Kern County deserve a hospital that works, and uh, we're, we're still not done doing that, but we've certainly made some real progress, and I'm grateful to everybody who's helped make that happen. Thank you, Supervisor Maggart. Mr. Couch. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to everyone that applied, and thank you to those that are going to serve and for their willingness to serve. And I have to say that when we hired you, Russell, whenever that was, I did not expect that it would be here this fast, this quickly, and that's a credit to you and your staff, and uh, I just want to publicly appreciate the work that you and your team have done. You've done a really good job in a short amount of time. You have more to do, I recognize, but you've done a great job. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Couch, Supervisor Scrivener. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll go in last. Everything has been said pretty much, um, but I, I do want to, to add my thanks um, to our staff that has worked so hard on this project. Um, you know, I, it just seems so ironic that Kern, Medical's, Kern Medical is such a bright spot for us now um, in the county uh, in the struggles that we're having in so many other areas. You go two years back and KMC was what we were wringing our hands over and now we're embarking on this um, new beginning for it. And so I, I wish the appointees that apply the best of luck. Um, I, I know that you have a very competent staff and, and Mr. Judd and um, Mr. Cantu and the rest of the folks that are at, um, that are at Kern Medical now. And also, um, I'd like to thank all those folks over the years that have served on the Blue Ribbon panels that have been um, part of the studies. I mean, this, this uh, hospital authority was something that was recommended many, many years ago. And so I think that um, this, this board and, and your staff and our staff in the county administrative office should be proud that we have finally uh, achieved that, that uh, recommendation. And I wish everybody the best of luck, and I have a tremendous amount of confidence in the folks that we've appointed and also our staff that's been working so hard. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Scrivener. I'd like to echo everything that uh, everybody said, but I'll, I recognize the fact that that horse is officially dead. It's time to dismount and move on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Judd. That'll take us to item number 58. Proposed addition of one billing office specialist, one and two position effective March 5th, 2016 in budget unit 4110. Public health. Mr. Constantine. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, the item before you is a request for public health to save some money. Uh, it is a request to fill a currently occupied billing office service specialist three position with a lower level and less expensive billing office service specialist one two position. Uh, this position, its sole function is to bill insurance companies for services that we provide in the clinic and in the lab. Uh, the current uh, position, the three level. Uh, she is retiring effective September 3rd and will begin terminal vacation May 3rd, excuse me, May 28th. We're requesting to fill this position uh, immediately at this lower level and provide a little bit of uh, crossover so we have some cross training occurring. The fiscal impact listed in the board letter uh, assumes we hire this new person um, effective on Monday and we hire them at the maximum step, the level two step E. Uh, although I appreciate the changes that have been made in personnel, I doubt we'll hire that person on Monday. It'll probably be several months or a couple months before we can, and uh, we'll probably hire them at a 1A, so the cost is minimal for this fiscal year, and then on an ongoing basis, we will save 12,000 to 28,000 annually thereafter. That concludes my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, open up for public comment and concerns and thoughts. Anyone in the public would like to comment? 
I'll close the public comment period and bring it back to the board for their consideration. Motion to approve. Second. A uh, quick comment. Quick, Please. Quick question. Mr. Mr. Constantine, could you give us, I know you have a few different budget units in your department, and I'm, I'm in favor of your, of your proposal, your recommendation, but how much general fund revenue and how much is fee supported in your department? What, I mean, do you understand my question? Uh, yes, okay. I believe so. I, I can answer it uh, one way. Within public health, our budget unit, 4110, uh, we have about $28 million as our operating uh, budget. About $6 million is from the general fund. Thank you. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved, all ayes. Thank you. Moving on to item number 60, the proposed resolution to repeal resolution 88-682 and disband the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome AIDS Advisory Board. Ms. Constantine. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, item, as you state, is to repeal a resolution that created the AIDS Advisory Board. Uh, this board was established as a 22-member board meeting nine times per year. Uh, the number of meetings and the number of uh, board appointed members has been amended multiple times through the years. It's now comprised of 18 members meeting six times per year. Currently nine of the 18 board appointed positions are vacant. Uh, the last time that all members were able to attend was in July of 2014. And since then our average attendance is approximately six board meetings and there is nobody that attends regularly from the public. While the purpose behind establishing the AIDS Advisory Board 28 years ago remains valid, um, HIV and AIDS are not the only sexually transmitted diseases that have a great impact on our community. In fact, for 2014, Kern County had the highest incident rate out of all 58 counties for chlamydia, we were third highest for gonorrhea, and fourth highest for syphilis. <clears throat> so although we are asking permission to allow the department to continue, to, excuse me, to discontinue the AIDS Advisory Board meetings, this action should be in no way interpreted as a lack of interest or focus on the issues of STD with, STDs within our community. The department has been uh, hard at work understanding how these skyrocketing STD rates impact our community. We have been talking with others throughout the state and other counties that have some progressive uh, actions in place. We have uh, looked at some proven successful strategies. We have been meeting with the state, the California Department of Public Health, and some statewide nonprofits exploring some proven evidence-based approaches that we believe can work in Kern County. Top on our list is the creation of a community-based action team comprised of folks from a wide variety of backgrounds to, and experience to lead our upcoming efforts on all STDs. Uh, our intent is not to hold yet another meeting um, and base our success on how many meetings we have, but to create an action team that uh, can quickly adapt to the changing threats in our community, intervene, move swiftly, and really become a team of, of action. So uh, although our intent is to focus on other STDs, HIV remains a core component of our efforts. And in addition, we will continue to hold routine HIV provider meetings that allow us to specially focus on the impacts of HIV in our community. Uh, and then just to finish my comments, in the audience today is Dennis Hendricks. He's the chair of the AIDS Advisory Board. Also Juan Garcia, who is the vice chair of the AIDS Advisory Board. And Bill Phelps with Clinica Sierra Vista, who all three may have additional comments or support if your board so desires. That concludes my comments, Mr. Chairman. I, I would love to hear from those uh, gentlemen if they uh, would like to speak. Public comments is open, so please make your way down, and we'll give you each an opportunity to address the board. Please identify yourself. Uh, my name is Dennis Hendricks, and I'm the chair of the AIDS Advisory Board. I'm also on um, the state uh, advisory board that is helping the state P department of public health with their HIV plan as we go into the next 
uh, five years. It's, uh, the plan is from 2014 to 2017. Uh, um, one of the things that's, it, it, the issue is efficiency and targeted um, perspectives and, and strategies on how we can best Obviously, we're trying to, we're learning more stuff as we, uh, a lot of the studies that they've been doing for years are actually paying off. And there's a lot of new biomedical advances that will be streaming down and different kinds of uh, early intervention strategies. And so I think the goal is to become more focused in our energies and uh, meet during the day. I mean, we're going to address the concerns that we don't want to leave people out of the, the mix who can't make it during the day. So we'll be looking at different strategies to get input from different parts of the community, but just to involve different parts of the community that already exist to fight uh, these uh, in, uh, infections. And as you know, HIV and hepatitis are still very important, but um, their uh, viral infections, which tend to be long term, and the bacterial infections, which he named syphilis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia, uh, the, the two highest, or the three highest, um, those, are, those are shorter acting. So as uh, time has changed, uh, early intervention with HIV is helping reduce the number of HIV infections. You may sit down in the front row. Don't stand. Good morning, my name is Juan Garcia and I'm uh, the vice chair of the, the uh, AIDS advisory board. I'm also the HIV director for Clinica Sierra Vista. And I have served on the AIDS advisory board or been part of the AIDS advisory board.